All right, hello world. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to start a new project. It's going to be a semi sort of major project we'll be working on. It's basically going to recreate a platform like Quizlet if you haven't used it before. It's basically something like a flashcard, uh, like an online flashcard. So you can create something, for, for example, if you're really interested in uh, in a particular subject, for example, let's say I want to remember what's 1 plus 1. And then in the definition, I can just put 2. And then in here, I can just say basics, basic maths, right? Something like that. And then what I can do is I can change the visibility to just me, right? And then when I press create, oh, okay, I need 2. So, and then I can do 2 plus 2 is 4. Right, like that. And then we can click on create. Apparently you pick a language, which is weird. It's, oh, I guess it's because I use letters, no, or numbers. Okay, there we go. So now I can see I created a flashcard like this, right? And then what I can do is I can, you know, play it. It can actually say stuff. One plus one equals. Yep. Like that. There's different options. For example, I can learn. Eh, I don't know. Something like that. So like this. this they actually change some of it. To so just show you a round of what we're going to try to recreate. Right? Which one's two? Obviously not this one. Right? And then not obviously not that one. Right? So we can try this again. One plus one is two. And two plus two is four. There we go. So it's like that. Yeah, so that's what we're going to recreate it, recreate in this project. And I think we're going to go ahead and get started by uh, just the new, just create a new set. Like here. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, all right. So in here, I'm going to create a new app. And I will call it let's call it news uh yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I need to install in Django because I'm in a virtual environment. All right, and then I can do this. Perfect, now I have this new set created. Of course, I've just set everything up. New, include, include, um, and you set the URLs here, and also to add you to the project. Install the app, and then you set. And then here I can do jingle.urls import pass from dot import views URL patterns equals to something like this, right? So, um, perfect, perfect. Now in here, I can just add a new empty route, and then in here, I can just define new set. There we go. All right, new set. So, I mean, right now we're looking at two methods, right, as always. And I'm just going to create a new HTML. So then I'll create a template, create a new set, and then we're going to create a new.html. There we go. Okay. 
So uh, in this, in here, we're just going to say create new set. Perfect. Um, now let's go ahead and get the bootstrap. Uh, you know the drill now, probably, if you're an old viewer. <laughs> Steal from good old bootstrap. Uh, I will create templates as well. So as you can see, this is one of the few times where we don't start with a um, authentication system, which doesn't really work out because eventually when we build the models, we need the, uh, we need the what, whatever, uh, we need the, what's that called? Uh, yeah, we need the user, right? Because only a syndicated user can create a set. We don't want just random people create sets. Um, okay, so here, I'm just going to write that. Block main and block. Okay, so now in here I can just write extend new set slash template dot html block title and block create new set block main and block and then we can just do a H1 to make sure it renders properly. Say create new set. All right, let's go and run the server. Okay. Okay. So we can do slash new. All right. All right. So in here, I forgot to write new set slash new .html. Of course, it will yell at me because why wouldn't it? Okay, perfect. Create a new set. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the front end. All right, so we're going to have a discard this card, right? And then can add card like that. And then if I delete like number three, you can see the number changes as well. So that's our goal today, just or in this video, right? Just to get this get the front end set up. Uh, so the first thing I guess I would do is I will create a container so I have some automatic margins. Because some automatic margins are usually good. There we go. All right, so in here, what are we looking at? Or they can't create something like this. Okay, so we're looking at basically two input field and it's a term here and then definition here. And that's essentially two text areas. Uh, so let's look at the form and let's see what, uh, what display do they have? Mm, okay, so this, this is like, uh, not what I want. Let's see, maybe floating label? Yeah, well, no, not really. I don't want the border. I'm going to look around to see if there is this, uh, this thing. See, this is like just a horizontal line below it. It doesn't have any borders. I have a bottom border and that's it. You know what? I kind of like this floating label. I'm just going to use a floating label. I know I'm pretty random, but whatever. Okay, so we're going to use a floating label and then here we're just going to say div and then we're going to have a long floating like, like so. And then I need something, I need it to be on the, essentially on the same line. I 
Okay, which is not what's happening. Um, all right, let's see. So if we can do anything to update this. Uh, okay, so. You know what, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna care really less about the CSS right now. So right now, all we're gonna do is this placeholder. It's a tech uh, word or how do they call it? Term, all right? And then definition. Like that. And then we'll have a number, say so one. Yep, like that, perfect. So I can say one plus one equals, and then definition, I can write two. Okay, so now I just need to create a button. So let's say span one dot, or just one. One, yeah, this will be easier. Okay, so essentially now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a button yeah like this so this way you're just gonna say delete actually let's just use you Delete and then at the bottom we can have a blue button and just say add. Add another term like that. And then I can refresh my page. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so now basically I'll just be recreating them all the time. Okay, so script, we'll have two functions. Um, okay, so in here, I think what we need to do is, if you got a way to store everything, well, we don't really need to store everything. And here I can just say current current ID is one, right? Current ID. Now it's going to be a little bit more complicated because when I delete it, I need to be able to figure out what did I delete. Well, no, I don't have to. Okay, so here's the logic for total. That would be one essentially and then our current ID will be one not I'm not quite sure what's the difference between them yet but we'll see so essentially we'll say function create create new term All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say total plus plus Current ID plus plus. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. So in here, I will say I'll give it an ID content as well. So let's say document dot get element by ID container dot okay not yet so let's say var div equals uh, document dot create element div and then oh I capitalize it doesn't matter okay. And then what we can do is we can say 
var id equals document dot create element span and then in here I can say id dot inner text equals current id var term equals document dot create element input var definition equals document dot create element input term dot set attribute and then here we're going to say type is text and then term just set attribute placeholder is definition and then we're going to copy paste inside of term we're going to say definition definition and then we can say, but we can write uh, div dot append child term div dot append child definition dot and then this can append child div. So that's a create new term, and I think that's what's gonna happen here. We're gonna say on click. And then when they click, we're just going to call the create new term function, which doesn't return anything. All right, so open up the console because how you like these can give us an error. Add new term. Okay. All right. Looks like it's somewhat working. Um, okay. So the issue, yeah, so I need to move this out, which I don't necessarily like, but, well, oh yeah, see, that's, well, see, the good thing is about class is that I can just give it another container, put it in there, refresh, refresh, yeah, now, so you can see it all looks better. Okay, so. A couple things. Okay, so it doesn't have the span. Oh, right, I did not. I need to do. Do dot append child ID. Perfect. And now I just need to create a delete button as well. Uh, okay. Var delete button equals document dot create element. I don't know, button, right? And then here we can just write delete button dot set attribute. Let's see what attribute we're gonna set. So we're gonna set the type. Just a simple button, nothing too fancy. Don't refresh the screen because by default, all button I think is submit. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but if it's a submit button, it's going to refresh the screen by default to make sure the data actually is sent to server securely. Yeah, okay. So. I just need to do div dot pen child delete button. There we go. I just refresh the screen. Add another button. Add another button. And did they not have the right class? Oh, I have button primer. 
danger, and then I also need to say delete button. Dot inner text equals to delete. Add another term. Huh, I don't know. Is there just a it's just different. It looks different for some reason. Okay. That's how this is rendered. Okay, virtually exactly the same, except this need to be the key instead of definition. Or term. The button spacing did not work out. So I need to make the button slightly smaller. How can I adjust the button? Small button. All right, so I guess we're just gonna add this attribute to here and here. So we always have one term, this term is undeletable. Actually it is. Depends on the situation. See, it's so weird. This looks way clustered, and I don't know. I don't know why it looks like that. I don't want. To, I don't want it to look like that. I mean. Do I really need to capitalize it? I mean, that's the only difference that's fine. Yeah, see this, how did I have a little gap there? That's what I'm not sure of. Well, anyway, that's that. And now, let's see, let's get a delete to work too. So, for delete, it takes in an ID. Function delete delete uh, delete term. So it takes in an ID, right? So basically, what does it do? Is uh, okay, yeah. Excuse me. So one more thing I have to do is I have to give um give all give the div a class. Just a, yeah, ID, we're gonna do dash plus ID. Current ID, I think, wait, current ID. Yeah, there we go. All right, so delete term. To delete a term, I have to say document, dot get element by class name, ID dot delete. Dot, how can I just delete them? Delete elements through get elements from class name. And you use a for each loop. Now just copy and paste. All right, whatever. Okay, yeah, I don't want to use jQuery because I don't like jQuery anymore. ID dash plus ID. There we go. All right, all right, all right. Okay, great. So now that's been deleted. Let's just see if this will work. Delete, so I'll have an unclick. Delete term. All right. Let's refresh the screen and add, add, delete. Okay, didn't work. Probably error in the console. No error? Oh. Yeah, ID. Delete term one. Oh yeah, that's right.
That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I need to give a button another attribute. Um, click here. Just right. Delete term parenthesis. Ah, uh, no. Let me just do a this way. Okay. So I'm just gonna write current ID like so. So if I refresh my screen. Yep, perfect. Now I need to rearrange the order. So then what I need to do. Is all this. Is OK, so that's the ID. So basically anything after it, I need to change. And that's when a total comes in. So in here I can write for let i equals id add less than equals total i plus plus. Oh, okay. All right. So i. What I need to do is I need to write document dot get element by id. Okay, so span, oh god, no, span, you have their individual ID. Ah, oh, right, where did I do the span pack signs? ID. Oh. All right, I guess I have some attribute ID here. Just gonna call you order dash plus ID. And dot uh, inner text in here. Or all we're gonna say is we're gonna write. And since we deleted one, it's just okay. I equals ID plus one actually because that element's already gone, and then we can do I minus one like that. And then all of a sudden you change their ID. I minus one. And then at the end we're just gonna say total minus minus. Okay, so let's refresh the screen. Add term, add term, add term, delete term. Okay, cannot do property of no any inner, inner text. So that means these thing hasn't been properly set up. Oh. Oh, come on. Current ID. I love how that's just how they represent it. Add term, add term, add term, delete. More term. Okay, so the current ID, if I delete one, next one should be seven. Delete this. Yes, so now what I need to do is I need to do a count. All right, now the ID is somewhere to stop. So I need to do a count, and that's what I need to set the current ID to. Actually, no, currently just equals total as of this moment. So at least three, that's five. What's total? Four. All right, what's total for current ID four? I delete that. 
total three, current ID three, I add another term, it's four, I delete you. So what just happened? Okay, delete you, add another term, I delete you, I add another term, I add another term, I delete you, I add another term, I delete you. Why would it just delete everything? <sighs> okay, so right now you figure this out. There was a weird bug. Okay. I delete five. That's five. I delete five. That's five. I delete three. Oh, okay. So ID don't update. That's weird. Order should be plus I minus one. Yes, that's right. And this is not working. Let's see, let's just do a console.log. Have a syntax error. No, it's not up to date. All right, and let's see if we're able to solve this bug. I delete number three. I delete number three. See, this is really weird. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can. Let me say a little bit more. And delete you. And delete you. So now they should have three, four, five. Oh, the div also need to get rearranged. Why do we give it a class? Can we just give it an ID? Yeah, just give it an ID instead. All right, well. That's order. Okay, so. element by ID, yeah, ID. Oh, no, I don't know if this is going to work. All right, back, add, add, add. Three, three, mm, works. Three, three. Now it's an error. Can't read property, no. Oh, right, I also need to update the on screen, on change. Uh, okay, right, so that happens on the delete button. You know what, I'm gonna modify the delete button. I'm going to say, How 
class name of parent class. Let's see. No, okay, so yeah, the delete term need to get changed. So I need to set it to parent class name HTML address web server. Okay, so yeah, I need to set to parents class name. Yeah, I need to do that. So the delete term need to do some more work, but I think this video already running. It's already pretty too long. So I'll end it here. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any question or comment, feel free to comment down below. But as always, stay safe and have a great rest of your day. That is me out.